our friends, it's um, Friday 13th March 2020, year of the all-seeing eye. Um, the wind or the breeze is probably going to make this narrative a little bit difficult to here we've got there about seven degrees it's about half four in the afternoon we've got a, a normal grey white sky supported by your tax payments now I'm back on the allotment I had a a mixed year last year I had a lot of uh, time off with bad illness bad health so um, the updates and the produce weren't as I would have hoped tinhead so this is an update off from last year I learned a lot between last year and this year one is to do little and often rather than trying to bang everything out in one fell swoop. This is the current state of play. The last year this was basically meadow. Um, got my water butt, that's filled itself up. So it uh, just goes to show how much rain we've got. So we've got about a square metre of um, a collection it's filled up a cubic meter of water so that's um, that's a lot of rain we've had as you're probably all aware and uh, I'm just going to give you a quick plot round I've got some good plans this year I put these in these lived in a bucket for about five years this is an apple I'm not sure the variety uh, as you can see, some blossoming. Now, it was blossoming when I transplanted it last year. The same with this. This is a pear. It's about four feet at the moment. I will be doing some training of these two. But um, I think they were shocked last year because within a couple of weeks, all the blossoms just fell off. There were two apples on this that um, got blown off. So all I'm doing is with this one is giving you an update. Now this one I took on last year, it's £10 a year. So a bought an absolute bargain. Five metres wide by ten and a half metres long. This is garlic. These I'm not sure of the variety. Actually these were um, just bog standard shop they weren't like kind of um, garden center or garden section garlic bulbs these were just your box standard culinary garlic cloves these I put in this year but these I put in last year um, I'm not sure what what the outcome of these is going to be whether they're going to be for seed or whether they are actually going to produce the bulbs these like I say I put these in before Christmas okay these are onions here I bought a bag from you know, I bought a bag from Wilkinson's £2.50 for I don't know how many there are in there but this whole bed between these posts with the tin cans on that's onions last year were peas in here had a good crop of peas and those are marrow fat peas again just dried culinary marrow fat peas it did produce a good crop uh, that's my rhubarb that was transported from my last plot one when I dug up it was one that I put in a pot 
and it didn't have a very good year last year but I imagine it's just settling in but this year it's I've already had a, a couple of stalks off of it I'm not a huge fan of uh, rhubarb unless somebody else cooks it so only this year I think um, I might increase I might increase the rhubarb um, plants because I'm looking at wine potatoes were in this bed here and I'm not sure I am actually set out what I'm going to be planting where as far as this area goes I did mention in one of my videos probably the first one I, I didn't actually take these plot this plot on until April last year and it, like I say it was a meadow And by the time the beds were prepared, I mean, we were sort of looking into May and people were planting out and I hadn't even got any beds ready. So I was a bit, um, I was a bit playing a bit of catch up last year. What I did do was I took on the plot next door, which is that one there. That is also maintained and managed by me. Again, £10 a year. I didn't have to pay last year because it, it was a meadow as well. So I got a, a year's free last year and I did get some crop. Um, I think I had onions there that didn't do very well. But I did have onions there that didn't do very well. And cabbages, brassicas, sprouts, a waste of time they were. But... Um, what I didn't do was I didn't tend, I was I just didn't attend to water or weed or check for slugs or pests. Uh, like I say, due to my illness it was it was a bit of a fallow year last year. But I've got plans for this. I've already put potatoes in here. And these were under the sink, sprouters I call them. The ones that just grow under your sink. So that bed there is filled up with various varieties I haven't got a clue which ones this here this trellis thing was my tomato bed and I did quite well um, and I'm gonna keep the frame for this year <clears throat> and use the same bed I'm not into crop rotation um, Unless there's a, a bed with, with a specific disease to a specific crop, I'm just going to be keeping the same beds. This bed here had, uh, I grew chickpeas and they were very successful. Um, I'll be doing the same again this year. I was hoping for a bigger bed for chickpeas, but uh, that's what I'm going to do there. I'm going to just going to uh, keep that idea. That's my runner bean plot. I'm again. I'm keeping. I've kept the. I've kept the um, the framework up. That was sort of like coppiced from. There's a motorway over there, and that line of tree behind that line of trees is a motorway, and the embankment. I just popped over, over the barrier, coppiced and brought these sticks so they didn't cost me anything. I wired them together, it's sturdy enough, it's withstood the huge amount of wind we've had. As you can see, I mean most, most allotments are like this, um, most plots are like this, they're just big open spaces so any wind that uh, it blows there's no barrier between the plots there's nothing to protect really anything from from those gusts we've been having so I mean uh, people have that people have had their sheds moved um, you know that, I mean that one there 
I mean it's sort of toppled over by about between a half a foot and a foot that's next door that's not mine they've got some uh, leaks there there's some very good producers here so like I say I, I prepared this months and months ago green uh, grass clippings have gone in there this is, so this is from me run of beans compost it's a nice um, amount of compost there these are filled up with what I emptied out from last year's exploits it had rotted down reasonably well so they've ended up in there I've got stingers aka nettles now last year these were quite prolific and what I did notice was they attract uh, a lot of ladybirds so and we know how good ladybirds are for gorging on say black fly so I, I kind of kept stingers I do like stingers anyway or nettles so to me they're not a weed this is the base I managed to uh, acquire a shed but it's been too windy to, to even contemplate erecting at the moment it needs it needs a, quite a bit of repair and like I say the wind it's not really the right sort of time to try and erect something that uh, can quite possibly end up over there in the rec recreation ground at a base for my shed I didn't pay for the shed it was reclaimed from another plot that um, and as you can see it's pretty damaged so it was either uh, them skipping it or me having it that was the options the base the one I've actually used and this is as probably because we're not allowed to uh, pour concrete on this plot we're not allowed fires we're not allowed um, well basically those two things really we're not allowed con poured concrete we're not allowed fires which is a bit of a shame particularly on the fire in uh, issue because I mean if you've got diseased crops the, the, the best way to get rid of them is to, is to burn them so it's a bit illogical really but um, so anyway so what I've actually got are some railway sleepers that I've leveled off and buried in the ground and then I've got what looks like three by one and a half something like that firmly fixed so what I'm hoping is that when the shed is fixed to this framework it's not actually going to lift and blow up over that fence okay um, so what I'm doing I'm, I'm, I'm really keen I mean it's sort of mid well, it's not mid it's like the first third of March and towards the end of March last year was at um, beast from the east the, the snow and the, the freezing and we haven't had a, we haven't had our frosts yet so planting anything out now might well be a little bit um, premature however what I am going to do is I'm mission to get my chickpeas in so I've got this I will be hopefully trying to warm this bed up It's not bad, it's not, um, you know, it's just not freezing, is it? So, that's this plot. Now, I've also, that's my, um, I've used that as a cold frame, I sort of knocked that up. Here, I've utilised these, that were actually, actually came with the plot, they came with a plot next door, but, uh, I'm hopefully got one window still at home at the moment. Um, sweet potatoes. So I'm planning on cultivating some sweet potatoes in these. I've got piles of soil. There's piles of soil there. There's compost in those bags. That's all homemade. Uh, what else is there? The little gooseberry bushes. Now these. Oh, I've done a little bit of pruning I'm not really a fan of gooseberries but uh, my mother is so 
those two, I planted in my last allotment and I, I dug them up and brought them up here. The cuttings sprouted, they're in there. Uh, mint, I planted mint, advice, there's plenty of advice on how to plant mint and what it's capable of doing. And what it does is um, it's one of those evasive, invasive plants it just goes rampant so I planted it in a pot and buried the pot in the ground. This is a nice one, I'm not sure the name of it but it does attract, uh, it gives off purple, nice purple flowers, it attracts bees. And what I have done this year, like we had the AGM a few weeks ago and I've taken this plot on. Same dimensions, ten and a half by five. This is what I'm dealing with. Now, I learned a few things from last year. I had a couple of comments at my old plot, because my old plot was like basically um, solid clay. And somebody mentioned, a few people mentioned actually, why not try no dig? And I, and I even said it to one of the, my colleagues on this allotment. Um, they said, oh, why don't you try no dig? And I said, nah, it's cheating. And I've subsequently realised and learned that soil is structured. Different depths, you've got different worms, there are dozens of different types of worm. They all live at different depths within the soil. They create their network of um, holes or runs. So it's a little bit like digging and turning over, double digging, all that jazz. Is a little bit like going through a blitz for these uh, the, for the worms and the, the different microbes and bacteria that live within the soil that um, they are that are necessary. So what I've decided to do now is from this point, apart from that plot over there, um, because I'm I'm digging pot uh, I'm burying potatoes in that that plot this year. So I'm going to need to sort of dig down. I want to turn. I, not so much turn it over as um, I just get down deep enough so I can plant potatoes. But this whole plot, my this so this plot comes up to here, okay. So what I have got to deal with is other people's plastic. I'm trying to keep away from plastic, but these hot and great things. Now this. <laughs> is huge it's a bath we're sort of like a crown so the idea is to I will kind of slice off with a sh with a sh um, with a spade I'll slice off the the lumps and I'm starting to collect cardboard I'm not into raised beds I want to keep the cost as low as possible so all I'm going to be doing is um, leveling it off not digging into it laying down uh, uh, cardboard and then any planting I will be doing I will do through the cardboard so it's just make a little hole and I mean, it's twofold really. First, I'm not disturbing the makeup of the soil, and secondly, I'll save my back. Okay, so I've got a plan for here. I will be digging a trench actually, and I'm going to be trying to grow rice or paddy as it's known, also known. Um, I will be going shopping next week sometime. We've got an organic uh, packaging free shop in town. It is my most favourite shop and I will be having a trip down to there. I will do a video um, about my little trip down there. And they do all organic grains, pulses, spices, everything is organic, ethically sourced, ethically grown. Um, so 
you know, chickpeas. What I have got is um, they're like the, uh, the dry chickpeas that I bought from. I think I bought them from Tesco's. Like half a half a kilo of um, dry chickpeas for two and a half quid, something like that. But um, that's what I used last year, and they did produce well. But this shop, uh, they actually sell organic chickpeas. So I'll be doing a little experiment with things like um, is it spelt wheat? So I've got wheat seeds as well to go in or kernels whatever they are so I'll be trying to grow a little bit of wheat you know even if it's just enough for a, a loaf of bread for me it's, um, it's sort of an achievement and then from say 100 grams of seed it's, it's that sort of thing of um, you know harvesting and then saving a third of your seed and sort of utilizing the rest as far as as far as things like that go the same the same with chickpeas I didn't save any from last year I will be doing that this year so I can't really think of anything else to do with these plots um, this area here as you can see there's piles of soil everywhere and from here up to here is where I'm going to be cardboarding. I'll be planting through the cardboard, so things like brassicas, I'll have a go at just making a little hole, digging a, making a little hole in the cardboard, digging a, probably digging a hole and adding some sort of compost and planting, and then hopefully developing, developing the depths of soil. Uh, that way because I'm fed up with digging I used to love it well I do love it but it's it's back breaking and it's time consuming so I, that's about the state of my plot so I've got three now ironically bearing in mind my thoughts on uh, Freemasonry and what a bunch of freeloaders they are this plot here is number 33. The next plot over is number 36. And the scrubland down there is number 39. So I'm quite chuffed that I've got those numbers. Okay, that's the lid for my little cold frame thing there and well what else have I got I've sort of uh, inherited I've got a water butt here and I filled it because my container there was absolutely it was actually overflowing I use this one and notice that it's got a split after I'd filled it up so I sort of decanted all the water and I do have an idea to repair it. It's just a case of sort of melting it. Somebody's already had a go at repairing it. But um, at some point, maybe over the weekend or basically when it's not windy, I can come up with a, some sort of burner and try and weld these two together with a bit of heat and a metal tool, maybe like a screwdriver or something, and that's my plot. Okie doke. Org. Well, I'm quite chuffed that these come up because I planted these within a few days. We had that huge amount of torrential rain, and these were planted mm, mid February. But in a few days, this whole thing was waterlogged, so I was a little bit worried. They, I mean, they still might, might be rotten beneath, but um, I'm sort of looking at growing everything that I buy. So tomatoes, I buy a lot of chickpeas. As a vegetarian, it's quite easy to be self-sustainable, really. Onions, they're a staple. I don't eat a lot of garlic, but... Um, I sort of originally grew it there to keep to ward off uh, pests 
and that's about it really for now okay now the, what I will say now is at the moment I'll put a link to this channel there are a couple of channels actually there's one called Hugh I think it's Hugh Richards Welsh fellow he's very informative and I've learned a lot off of him and I think he's learned a lot off of probably my favourite source of information which is a chap called Charles Dowding I'll leave a link to his channel because he's a sort of no dig expert I think and um, you know it's there's a variety of sources for things like the, the benefits of no dig but I, t for me the no dig the no dig benefit is the fact that what just just by merely digging all you're doing it's like turfing, it's like being evicted for these um, worms and the microbes, etc., and the bacteria, etc. And, you know, for me, that's the, that's the main reason why the no dig is, um, I'm sort of going down that route. So, it's probably the biggest thing that I've actually learned since last year. So, I owe a few apologies. I've already given out a few apologies, actually. I've, about my comments on no dig being cheating when in fact actually it is, makes common sense because I mean if you look in forests forests seem to manage without people going in and cultivating so um, it's, it's as simple as that really okay cheers tatarwan